Hey, fellowship, how you guys doing? Are you all excited to be in God's house? And if you're worshiping with us online, let's give God a big praise in this moment. Come on, let's do it. Let's, let's praise God. He is worthy to be praised. Do this with me. Oh God, we give you all the honor and all the glory in this moment. We place you first in our lives. You are worthy to be praised and you desire the affection of your people. with us. God was praised today. Come on, repeat after me. Sing a little louder. 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 Sing a little louder.
over this place. some of these words as we draw close to him. We're going to run to him and God's always there for you. Sing with me. You are good. You are good. You are good. When there's nothing good in me. You are love. You are love. On display for all to see. You are light. You are light. When the darkness closes in. Come on, declare this with me. Then my 
Give him praise. Thank you, Father. Good morning, Fellowship of the Rockies. Welcome to church this weekend. We just want to welcome you, whether you're joining us in the room this morning, if you're in the theater, if you're joining us online. It is amazing to be able to worship the Lord and the God of the universe together. My name is Eli Finley, and I'm the youth pastor here at the church. We're going to continue in this time of worship through the bringing of our tithes and our offerings. And so there are many ways that you can worship through your giving here at Fellowship. You can give online, you can give through the mail, you can text anything that you'd like to give as well. We're also going to continue in worship by reading scripture together as, as one body, as one church. We're going to read these scriptures together and just remind ourselves that we get to come before the altar of God and worship Him and praise Him. So we're going to read out of Psalms chapter 43, verses 3 and 4. They'll come up on the screen for you. And so we're just going to read these together out loud and reflect on what these words mean to us as a church right now. It starts this way. It says, send out your light and your truth. Let them guide me. Let them lead me to your holy mountain, to the place where you live. There I will go to the altar of God, to God, the source of all my joy. I will praise you with my harp, O God, my God. We are at the altar right now. We are before God right now, praising him. He is accessible to us. He's not hiding from us. Let's pursue him in prayer and worship. Let me pray for you this weekend. Lord Jesus, we love you. We love you and we trust you. And during this season that things change daily, you do not change. It's your arms that we're running to. You are more than our words could ever say. You are here, and in your presence we are made whole. Father God, we come before your altar today to sing of your praise, of your mercy, your forgiveness, your grace, and of your love. It's in your son Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Sorrows and 
Let's give him thanks in this moment. Oh God, we can never repay you. Go back to the bridge, please. From the bridge on. You know, we don't know how long we'll get to do this in this all this stuff that's going on. This might be the last time in here for a little while. Why don't we make this as powerful as we can as we praise his name? Let's give God a big hand right now. We don't know when we'll begin to do this again. Maybe we'll be outside. I don't know. All I know is that. We're excited to praise God. We want you to be excited. Why don't we sing that, Kayla? The, let's go back to that bridge. Come on. Let this something special happen.
praise you, God. Thank you, Father. And God, in this moment, we don't take any of this for granted. We just won't do it. We're going to continue to love you. We're going to continue to think about you, to read about you, to learn about you. No one can take that away. And more, we're going to continue to spread your love everywhere we go. We pray that over everyone here and out there, our faces would radiate you and all that you are and your love. Bring as many to you as we can, Father. Open our hearts, our ears, our minds to hear a word from you. We're coming to you, Father. We thank you for this moment. In your son's name we pray. And everybody loudly said, amen. You may be seated. Hey there, Fellowship of the Rockies. My name is Eli Finley. I'm the youth pastor here. Welcome to services this weekend. We're so glad that you have joined us. Here's some more about what's going on at Fellowship as we end out this year. One of the Fellowship Five values that we have been sticking to during this time is that we want to help you to serve others. There are two ways that we're doing this as we round out the end of the year. The first way is by sending Christmas bags to children in Mbezi, Africa, a community that we've been partnered with for quite a few years now. We're calling them Mbezi Blessing Bags. So there's more information about that on our website. Check it out today. The other ministry that we are partnering with at the end of this year is the Casa Toy Drive. It is a toy drive here in our community of Pueblo. We're asking that you bring new toys or gift cards to drop off here at the church that will be collected to be given to kids from zero to 18 years old in our community who have been neglected or abused. So those are the two ministries that we're gonna join together with here uh, so that we can serve globally and also locally right here in our hometown of Pueblo. We ask that you would join together with us in doing that. There is a ton of information on how you can get involved on our website. Check it out today. It's www.fellowshipoftherockies.org. Now here's a message from Pastor Charlie. Hey everybody, hope you're doing well this weekend. Hey listen, you may be wondering why I'm not in person this weekend and I'm on video. Well, the short answer is I've been exposed to COVID-19. Uh, this last week I attended a, just a small gathering of, of pastors and, and after that meeting we had a pastor that notified us that he tested positive for COVID-19, which means I have been exposed to COVID-19. So out of my love for you, our community, um, our ministry partners, our staff, our pastors, I am in self-quarantine for the next 14 days. On Monday, I'm going to get tested for, for COVID-19, and of course, that takes a few days to, to get the results back. And, and so for the next 14 days, I'm, I'm in self-quarantine. And so you may be wondering, what does worship services look like moving forward? And so this next week on Monday, we're going to do some Zoom calls and and we'll get that information out to you um, as far as what that looks like. But listen, I am really excited this weekend that we are announcing the Mimbezi uh, blessing bags. And so you may not be aware of the mission work that we have going on in Africa. For about the last 10 years, we've been sending teams to, to Africa, to the Mimbezi area. And so we've, we've, we've built a church. We've put in a water well. Uh, we put in a garden, we bought them chickens, we've resourced uh, missionaries that are there, and we are impacting Mimbezi in just a, a huge way. And so this year, I'm really excited. In fact, here's our goal is, is to be able to put uh, 300 of these bags together. Listen, if we could put 300 bags together, then we would bless every family, every child in Mimbezi. I mean, this would be a huge thing for that area. So I would just encourage you, go to our website, get the list, uh, follow the instructions, and then we're going to ship them uh, to Africa. It's going to be amazing to see what God does through Fellowship of the Rockies as we continue to minister to them. And the really cool thing about this is we know these kids. Our team, I mean, our team, we've been there for 10 years. And so a lot of these kids we know, we've met, they've been at the, the things that we have done there, our VBS. And so we just look forward to see what God is going to do as we continue to just resource this area 
And then as you know, we've made the fellowship five promises to you, and, and we're going to keep those, and we're going to navigate through them, uh, that we will walk through this crisis together. We're still committed to that. It's fluid, and it changes often. I mean, we know that, right? And then we're going to help you and your family to stay spiritually healthy, and we're going to continue to minister during this time. We're going to continue to offer worship services, and of course, that may look a little bit different moving forward with a with the new with some of the new restrictions and and maybe an online service with a drive-in uh, worship service in the parking lot. And that way we can still gather. We can still encourage those that want to gather with us. We could even do a drive-in prayer response to where we could have prayer ministry there, stay six feet away from a vehicle, and people could even receive prayer after our drive-in uh, worship service. And so we'll get that information out to you uh, this next week as we navigate through this. Then, of course, we're going to serve you if you get sick. I'm telling you, if you need us, man, if you need us, reach out to us. Email us. Call us. Uh, do whatever you have to do. We want to minister to you. We want to help you. And then we're going to continue to help you to serve others, just like we're doing in Membezi, just like we're doing with CASA, just like we're doing with some other things. I just want to tell you how much I love you, how thankful I am for you, uh, how what an honor it is just to simply be your pastor, but to walk through this uh, pandemic together. And so I love you guys. You guys pray for Pastor Dwayne. He got really short notice that he was up this weekend to preach. So you pray for him. You welcome him. Welcome Pastor Dwayne. God bless you guys. Thank you guys very much. So I just have one thing. I know that out of what Pastor Charlie just shared with us, that you'll be praying for Pastor Charlie. Uh, we, we pray for anyone we know that they don't actually get this virus. But let me go beyond that. My thought is this. Let's say Pastor Charlie is quarantined for 14 days, which he is, and he doesn't get COVID-19. I think we need to pray for Karen Jones. 14 days in the house, I think she's going to be looking for a place to go on vacation without him. So you guys pray for them. Uh, one quick thing that came in too late for us to get on videos or whatever, because things change kind of minute by minute, hour by hour, uh, Fellowship Youth will not be meeting Sunday evening uh, this week. Uh, we'll have we'll uh, have further announcements from that. Pastor Eli will send things out, but the preteen and the youth ministry will not meet tonight. So, after Pastor Charlie called me at a what was rather a short notice Friday evening, when he received the email that he had been exposed uh, at this pastor gathering, I began to read over some Bible study material and some sermon titles. I got out my computer and I started scanning through every Bible study I'd ever done and, and asking the Lord to, to show me what He would have our church here. Now, this didn't surprise God, but it really did surprise me. So I started reading through, and as I read the title of this study, of this sermon, God reminded me of the incident in my life a few years ago that caused me to begin this study in the Bible. And he said, you need to read this sermon again. And I didn't know at that point if I was just supposed to take, you know, a few minutes out and read through that Bible study material for my own good or if God was going to do something more. But the more I read, the more the Lord began to minister to me yet again and then the more the Lord began to say to me, this needs to be spoken to our church family at this particular time. See, all of us have lessons in life that we have to learn over and over again, don't we? we we're like a, a bucket with a hole in it. God fills us up, and then we leak. We leak down, and He has to fill again, and we leak. So that's just kind of the nature of how we are, isn't it? But the Lord is gracious, and He keeps filling us with what we need. So, I'll never, ever forget, as long as I live, well, as long as I have my right mind, you know, at my age, it's beginning to, I'm beginning to wonder if I have that. But, I'll never forget this. Because of what God did in my heart and my life a few years ago, a good friend of mine 
uh, walked up to me at a, at a gathering we were at, and another man was with him, and he said, hey, Pastor Dwayne, I want you to meet uh, this friend of mine. This is Pastor blank, and he introduced me to this man. I don't even remember the man's name, but I'll never forget his face, never forget our interaction. And after we had been introduced, I just simply politely said, how are you doing? Now, you know, and I know, when we say that, we don't always really mean, how are you doing? We don't want the laundry list of how, what all is going on in their lives. We just want them to say something like, oh, I'm doing fine, thank you very much, or, or something of that nature. Well, he didn't do any of that. I said, how are you doing? And he said, I am content. And I, I couldn't get away from that because he just, it was like he said, I am, and sorted through a list of words that would describe how he was on that day, and he settled rather decisively settled on the word content. And my internal, thank the Lord, response was, oh, really? And are you implying that I'm not or that I should be or what? And so I, I kind of turned away from that and we went on with whatever else we were doing. But the Holy Spirit didn't let me leave that statement. And I began to wrestle with myself because the Holy Spirit was wrestling with me. And I thought, is it really possible to truly be content? Or is that one of those words we say, like when you say to somebody at church especially, well, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm blessed. Well, aren't you special? Uh, we all are. You know, it's like, I'm blessed. How about you? Uh, so I thought, is it? possible to be that or is that just one of those words we throw around and then I realized I could not could not describe my daily life as having a pattern of being content that was tremendously convicting and so as I wrestled with myself I thought well may maybe that's not something we really need maybe maybe that's for People who are too lazy to do the work it takes to make the needed changes that there are in this world. Are you following my line of logic? We'll, we have all kinds of logic when we're trying to justify ourselves, don't we? And so, finally, after wrestling with that, days later, it wouldn't leave me. And so I said, I'll go to the Scripture and see. That... Uh, and sometimes while I was studying it, I thought it was a mistake, but in hindsight, it was no mistake at all. So let's look at it and, and, as we open this topic about being content. Are you content? I decided that that was a struggle for me, and here's what I believe. It's probably a struggle for several Christians. And so that's why we share this together. 1 Timothy 6.6 6 is the first verse I came across. I'll just share three of the ones with you before we launch into a study of it. But here, here's what the three verses that, first of all, the Lord used to convict me more deeply. 1 Timothy 6.6, 6, Paul's writing to a young pastor, and he says to him, but godliness, he's been talking to him about what it means to be like the Lord, let God change you. Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food and clothing, with these we shall be content. And I thought, oh my, I want so much more than just food and just clothing. So the conviction continued. Then Philippians 4, verses 10 and 11, the, the opening of the passage we'll end up studying at the very end today. Uh, verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, how I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. He's talking to the Philippian church who are concerned about Paul's needs. He says, I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need. Now, that is an understatement or maybe an overstatement because the Apostle Paul had many needs. He was thrown in prison. He was beaten. There are all kinds of needs that he had that they were concerned about, and rightly so. But he says, not that I was ever in need, 
For I've learned, here's why he didn't see himself as being in need, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have. And another layer of conviction came in my life from the Holy Spirit, I thought. I am not the least bit content with only what I now have. Then in Hebrews chapter 13, verses 5 and 6, the, uh, well, we think the apostle, many of us think the apostle Paul wrote this. Whoever the Holy Spirit directed to write the book of Hebrews says this, keep your life free from the love of money, ouch, and be content with what you have. This contentment has a whole lot to do with what we have, doesn't it? It seems from Scripture. For he has said, the Lord has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You can trust him. So I decided to do more study because just those three passages were enough to convince me that I couldn't dismiss this thing of I am content. And I'm pretty sure all of us need this and especially in the times we're walking through in our society and in our world. So let's talk about contentment. The definition for the word content, I always go to definitions. We need to know what we're talking about. means this, satisfied with what one is or has, not wanting more, not wanting anything else beyond what one presently has. I think some synonyms, some words that go along with this and help describe it, would be this, if I am content, then I will be fulfilled, I will be satisfied, I will be gratified with what I have, I will be at peace with what I have, who I am, all of those things. So, here's what I want us to do this weekend. I want us to consider our lives, what, it, what is present in our lives when we're not content. We need to be able to identify those things so we don't excuse them. Then I want us to understand what Scripture says about us when we are content, what that picture looks like. And then finally, let's find out the pathway the Lord has for us to arrive at contentment in our lives, okay? So three, three things. So first, when I'm not content, here's what I'm doing. I'm always looking for more doesn't matter what the situation is. But if I'm not content within myself, then I'm looking for more. I may be looking for more money. The Bible talked a lot about money, it seems, when it talks about contentment or possessions. I, I, I may be looking for more affirmation from other people. I want more about me. I want to feel better about me. And if I feel pretty good about me, I want to feel even better about me. And when I'm not content, I'm looking for more success, more promotion, if, if, if I'm not content, I'm looking for more results for my efforts. In fact, if I put in this much effort, I want this much in results. I don't want only this much in results. I want more always. I want to give this much, but I want a lot more back. I want more attention from other people in my relationships. I end up, because I'm not content, being needy and wanting, wanting, wanting from other people. And then... When I'm not content, I want more action from God. And not just action. I want the action that I ask for from God. You ever been there? All of us have. I'm not content, and so I'm not really, even all of these other things in my life, the bottom line is I'm not really content with God, with who He is, with what He's provided with what I think he's about to do or not about to do in my life, that's a picture of you and me when we're not content. Because ultimately, the bottom line of that, the root of that is, I'm not content with God. Second thing, when I am content, let's look at a picture of that. When I am content, I will be fully satisfied with several things. So I'll, go, I'll give you four. First, I'm, I'm satisfied with who I am, not just who I am, but who I am actually in Christ, okay? For the believer in Jesus Christ, that's the key. I may not be satisfied with who I am because I have so far to go. God's still doing so much in me. But when I'm really content, I'm satisfied with who I am in 
Jesus Christ. I'm satisfied with my salvation. I'm satisfied with my self-worth. Look at this. In 2 Corinthians, there are a couple of verses that, that help us with this whole thing about salvation and our, and our worth to the Lord. Uh, verse 17 in 2 Corinthians 5 says it this way. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. In other words, the old Duane was taken away by the Lord, and he created a new person spiritually, one that didn't exist before. He didn't just clean up the old Duane. He made a new spiritual creation. I can be content with my salvation, who I am in Christ, because he made me. And then I can understand my self-worth, my worth to him, and what, he, what he's made me to be for others in ministry. Verse 21 says it this way. For our sake, he made him, Jesus, to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him, in Christ, we might become the righteousness of God. How about that? Not because we're so good, but because he is holy and he is ultimately good, he gives us his righteousness. Now, if that doesn't change your worth before the Lord, I don't know what will. I can be content in who I am. Then I can be content in what I have. I can be fully satisfied with my possessions. Let's look at Philippians 4, 10, and 11. I didn't say I always am. I said I can be, and so can you, okay? Verse 10, Philippians 4. How I praise the Lord that you're concerned about me again. The verses we read a moment ago. I know you've always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to help me. Not that I was ever in need. For I've learned how to be content with what I have, with my possessions. I can be content with my life situations, okay? I can, I can it, it's really easy to be, be content when things are great. But beyond my possessions, there are situations in life that come that I don't enjoy, that you don't enjoy. Let's look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Three verses here real quickly. Paul's talking about a time when, it, when he was having a struggle, and it was an ongoing struggle. And he said, so to keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, revelations he had received from the Lord, a thorn was given me in the flesh. We don't know what it was exactly. A messenger of Satan to harass me to keep me from becoming conceited. God doesn't want us to become conceited. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. I pleaded for an extended period of time is implicit here. But he, the Lord, said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. It's more than enough, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In other words, in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses. Think on that phrase for a moment. That's not the way we operate typically, is it? So that the power of Christ may rest upon me for the sake of Christ then. Here it is. I am content. I'm not just content. Look at his list. I'm content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecution, and calamities. For when I'm weak, then I'm strong. I'm strong because he is in me and through me. When I'm content, I also can be fully satisfied with where I'm going. You see, the Bible talks about the rest of my life here on earth and the rest of your life. In the book of Hebrews, he sa it says, he will never leave me or you or forsake us. Never, never, never leave, never, never forsake us. We can be satisfied, content with the rest of our life here on earth that he's in control. But we also can be content about eternity. Look at 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It'll come up on the screens. It says, that is what the Scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no eye has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love Him. Not just in this life, but all through eternity. We cannot possibly imagine, cannot fathom what He's prepared for us. And then the fourth thing. When I'm content, I'm fully satisfied with God. 
I'm satisfied with who he is. I'm satisfied with what he provides for me. I'm satisfied with the circumstances he places in my life. I'm just content, satisfied with God himself. The best example I have is Jesus. When he was coming to his crucifixion on the cross, and he prayed. Many of us know this story. He prayed, Father, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but I'm content with your will. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but that's what Jesus was saying. He was content with God's will and God's perfect love for him. In fact, in Romans 8, the Scripture promises us that nothing in all creation, nothing, nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I can be content with God and His love for me. Now, finally, how do I find this thing called contentment? Or a better question really would be, how does God want to help me find contentment? Now, if you'll turn in your Bibles to Philippians chapter 4, verses 11, 12, and 13, whether it's uh, your device or hard copy Bible, I want you to leave it open to this passage for the next few minutes, please. Philippians 4, beginning at verse 11. So the way God wants me to find contentment is, first of all, to learn, to learn. So it says in verse 11, not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I've learned in whatever situation I am to be content. You see, Paul didn't just automatically know this, nor do we. We don't automatically know all that God wants us to know. So we have to learn what he wants us to know. We need to learn the truth. Some of the things we've learned, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to unlearn in our lives or help us to unlearn that. We need the truth. That's what we need to learn. Jesus himself said in John 8, you'll know the truth. The truth will set you free. So we need to learn his truth about salvation. If you've not been born again, you need his truth about that because he is the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through Jesus. If you've already been born again, you need to learn, I need to learn that He has forgiven me, that He's accepted me, that He loves me deeply, that He's given me new spiritual life, and that is called eternal life, and eternal means forever. I can absolutely learn what He wants me to learn so that I'm moving on my way toward contentment. And then the next thing He wants me to do right in this passage, it tells us, still in verse 11, He wants me to choose I need to make a right choice. Look at the last part of verse 11. He says, for I've learned in whatever situation I am, let me paraphrase, to choose contentment. Be content. That's not something that just drops on you. You learn the truth of God's Word, and you choose to step out and believe and obey that truth. You're choosing contentment. I'm choosing contentment. It didn't just happen to the Apostle Paul. He learned to choose that. And so knowing the truth is not all there is. We choose to believe and obey the truth. So after I learn and I choose, let's look at verses 12 and 13. Here's what he wants me to do in order to come to this place of contentment. That is trust. He wants me to trust. Look at 12 and 13. He says, I know how to be brought low. And I know how to abound. In any and every circumstance, I've learned the secret of facing plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things, here's the phrase, through him who strengthens me. Now, the Apostle Paul knew exactly who was going to provide for him. He was going to provide the strength. He was going to provide the contentment to go through abundance, to go through complete lack, to go through hunger, to go through hardship, to go through great times, through Jesus Christ. Now, often we will quote that. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And we march out and jump off a cliff that God never asked us to jump off. We do some crazy thing and we try to blame God and we quote this verse. That is not what this verse is for. 
If I could add a few words and paraphrase the meaning of this, I would say this. I can do all of the things God asks me to do through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. That's what we can do. And that's how we arrive at contentment. He wants us to get there. We learn and we choose. And then we trust that through him, he'll give us the strength. So, he will bring contentment. If, if there's a, not been a time when you gave your life to Jesus Christ, there is no possible way in this life or the next to have contentment. It's an impossibility. God made us for relationship with himself. And we'll not be content until we have that relationship. But we've already established that Christians, those who have been born again, can also struggle with contentment. We must learn his truth. We must choose his way. And we must trust the only one who can give us deep, lasting, ongoing, eternal contentment. Would you bow your heads with me and close your eyes? Do you long to be content? Or maybe you where I was that day when I met that gentleman. And I didn't even care if I had it because I thought I was okay until the Holy Spirit said, you need this, Dwayne. You need to allow me to work in your life and bring contentment in your life. Do you long to be content with the things you have? With your job? With your friends? Spouse? Your children? The direction of your life? With your relationship with Jesus? With the way God is ordering your life? Or do you long to be content with knowing Jesus as your Lord and Savior if you haven't done that yet? You can be. And you can know Him. He's waiting for you. My prayer is that today you would submit to him, that I would submit to him in every area of our lives so he can bring this contentment of the Lord Jesus Christ, contentment of the Holy Spirit in our lives. If you would like someone, one of our pastors, to talk with you about this, to pray with you about this, you can scan on the back of the seats fill out a connect card. There are hard copies out in the foyer that you can pick up and drop in the, the boxes in the foyer, the theater, the family room. You can let us know how we can pray with you. And we would be privileged to do that. Father, today, we know that your will is for us to be content in you. And we commit to walk your path toward a life of contentment, a life of knowing you, loving you, and being fulfilled by you. In Jesus' name, amen. We've been closing our services with a blessing from Scripture. Today, if I could, let me paraphrase this passage in Philippians 4, 11 through 13, and ask God's blessing and speak a blessing over you as our church. This week, under the power of God's Holy Spirit, may you learn to be content in whatever situation the Lord brings your way. May you learn the contentment, may I learn the contentment of the secret of having plenty or being in need and still being content regardless. And may you truly believe that you can do all the things the Lord asks you to because Jesus Christ who lives in you, will give you the strength you need. God bless you. Go in peace today.